All right, West Region, which is where Phoenix is, where I'm getting my steak dinner, just in case anybody <laughs> was wondering. Um, we've got UNC Alabama. Isaac, mm. I'm going to start here with you, and I'm going to preface this by saying I've got a potential upset pick here in this one. But I, I know I think UNC was Chris's pick. Don't quote me on that. But Isaac, who you got in this one, UNC or Alabama? I picked Bama. I'm not sure how great I feel about it. But there's certain times where I watch North Carolina where I feel like – offensively they're playing some lineups with not a ton of shooting and not a ton of spacing it's like hey when we have you know when it's Cormac Ryan he's a shooter you got to guard and when it's Harrison Ingram is making shots you got to guard him but Baycott on the perimeter you don't necessarily have to guard him Elliot Cadeau on the perimeter you don't have to guard him Seth Trimble you don't have to guard him all of those things Alabama's ability to have those nights where they make 15 16 threes that terrifies me if I'm a North Carolina fan. Like that really terrifies me because I don't know if this this crew has just enough offensive punch on the perimeter to make that many threes to make up for it. Now, what? How do you make up for that? Offensive rebounds, get to the free throw line, dominate at the rim, and we've seen North Carolina do that, right? But this team reminds me a little bit of Kentucky, and Kentucky gave North Carolina a lot of problems in non-conference play. I wonder if Alabama can do the same thing. Now, again, we're banking on three-point variance, right? You got to make a lot of threes, but. Alabama Alabama is very, very capable of it. And one last thing I'll say, too. Look at the lead guards that have gone off against North Carolina lately. That That is a real trend that's happening in the last six or seven games, a lead guard going for well over 20. Alabama, I think Mark Sears is set up for a big night. I think Aaron Estrada is set up for a really big night as well. He's had a interesting relationship. It's probably the nicest way to describe it with him and Nate Zotes all season long. But if they get the best version of Aaron Estrada to go along with the, the just the solid play that they've gotten from Sears basically all season long, I think Alabama has enough firepower to, to really honestly hang 100 on North Carolina. And can North Carolina beat that number if, the, if this turns into a shootout? I'm a little hesitant. Yeah, that that's my thing. And Chris, I'm coming to you next, but I just want to jump off that because you you basically just illustrated my point is this has been one of the most potent offenses in the country all season long. I would also argue we saw a better version of them defensively against Grand Canyon than we've seen in quite some time. Um, North Carolina is the more talented team. In some ways, this reminds me of Illinois versus Iowa State, and that it's clear who's the most talented team. North Carolina is the most talented team in this matchup, but there is a clear path forward where Alabama could win this, and that is if their offense is clicking on all cylinders because they're exceptionally potent offensively. Going into the NCAA tournament, they were the second best offense in the country. Mark Sears is putting up insane numbers, 21 and a half points, four plus assists, four plus rebounds, and his shooting splits are absolutely off the charts. So with the amount of threes they take, if they make threes and they get that positive momentum going, what does that do to Carolina's psyche? How much do they look for? They need somebody like Elliot Cadeau, who struggled with his jumper this year. I can tell you the mechanics are not the same this year that they were in high school. They've they've deviated. It seems like it's becoming a little bit mental for them. So who steps up if they shut down R.J. Davis and different players like that? It's it's very interesting to me, and I do think there's a path for Alabama to win this game if they are clicking on all cylinders offensively. Chris, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Yeah, yeah definitely didn't pick Carolina, but uh, like I, Isaac, I'm going to maybe shift here a little bit. After I watched what I watched last night, that Grand Canyon team, I mean, they really took it to Alabama, 17 blocks between the two teams. I mean, they were beating up Alabama shots. I'm like, this is a big West, I'm mean, sorry, this is a whack team, beating up shots from an SEC team. And and even though uh, Alabama didn't traditionally shoot it the way they normally do, there was a chance there. I thought Grand Canyon's gonna win this game, you know? And so the, the point is, is that they're not playing against Grand Canyon this time around, they're playing against Carolina. And I don't think they have a matchup for Baycott. And he's the X factor to me. You can talk about the guards. They're going to be great guarding those guards on a perimeter. I think they're going to have that figured out. And I think that Carolina getting behind, and you saw that interview with Hubert Davis when he just says, we got to show up to the fight. If Carolina shows up to the fight, and I think the Michigan State game woke them up, if they show up to the fight, they have the experience. I don't think Cormac Ryan or Harrison Ingram, they're bigger than Alabama. Alabama has a ton of small guards like transfers. You got Lightsell, who's a transfer from Fullerton. And Mark, I mean, he's been there a while, but he transferred from Ohio. You got Strada's a transfer. I know you guys have the transfer court. I love the transfer thing because it's just amazing how Nadal's has assembled. Sam Walton as well, how he's assembled this roster of guys that have come. And now we are one of the best offensive Holding teams. He reminds me of Eric Coriel and Dan Fouts and the Chargers back in the day that probably pre predates you guys. But for me, offense, I love the offensive aspect of it. People say defense travels, but with these guys, offense travels. The question is, 
will they be smart enough? You can take all the threes you want because if they have what they had an off night, they had an off night the other night, and guess what happened? They almost lost, and that team was not afraid. They have some some uh, some really good players as well, athletic players, and Tyon Grant Foster probably guys. I know Mark Sears was pretty good. Was the best player on the floor that night. He is very, very, very good. Again, I don't want to say Mark Sears is not a great player. He certainly is. But he's going against the first-team All-American, R.J. Davis. Now you had Howard Harrison Ingram, Carmack Ryan, five-star players who were, came from – and I'll say – let me say this other thing about the recruiting aspect of what Hubert Davis is because I know you're going to have this conversation later. Think about this. You're a number one team. You don't go to the tournament. You return a nucleus. You lose Caleb Love. You bring up R.J. Davis and Baycott. And you say, I got to go in and portal and find pop guys to help me win. You go get Withers from Louisville, losing program. You get Carl McRyan, didn't go to tournament. You get Harrison Ingram, didn't go to tournament. You put him in, you add Ellie Cadeau, and this team has a chance to be a Final Four team. Give Hubert Davis credit because lineup optimization and being able to see that is a big thing in that portal because you don't know what you're getting. They've done a tremendous job. I love Alabama. I just think there's no way that Carolina this year, I'm going to flip my pick, is going to be denied because Michigan State, I think, was the game to clip them. I don't think they lose to Alabama. I just don't think they have, they have the firepower on paper. But when you step on that court, I just think Carolina Blue is just too big for them to overcome. All right. Hard to argue with that. Guys, we have one game left to break down, and it's Arizona and Clemson, another ACC team that has played their way into the Sweet 16, adding some ammunition to the argument that maybe the ACC team needed one more team in, although Virginia certainly didn't help uh, that that dialogue. So, Chris, I'm going to start with you in this one. Who do you like in this matchup between Arizona and Clemson? How about you think? Are you serious? I'm taking Arizona. <laughs> Caleb Love and Caleb Love versus Carolina. That's all that needs to be said. I mean, give Brad Brownell credit. He's done a tremendous job this year. I mean, him talking about the Big 12 – and then the way they scheduled and blowing people out and all of a sudden, similar to the Mountain West, playing against one seeds all year long, maybe that league was not as good as people anticipated. I disagree with that. You know, they, the Big 12 can't put their teams in the tournament. The committee did that. But the ACC, it shows Clemson is pretty good. Now, they're another team. They're pretty old. Right? They got some old guys. Gerard, you got some guys out there. P.J. Hall that are very good players that are older players. Right. And then when you get in a tournament and Clemson, let's this, this face guy, Brad Brownell's been one of those guys everyone says getting fired every year. And yet he continues to win, win, win. And this is his opportunity. I really like him in this game. And, and again, Baylor just struggled, couldn't make free throws. Jacoby Walter, again, you, you know, talk NBA draft picks all you want. At the end of the day, freshmen cannot win in this event. This is a grown man event is what you're playing against. And Arizona, as we've mentioned before, I know keep, I keep coming back to this recurring motif. Tommy Lloyd, tremendous coach, a young coach, has done a really, really good job of this Arizona program. But I'll say it again. In recruiting, Duke, they don't take many transfers, a bunch of five stars. Kentucky, they tried it last year, and they got back to getting five stars, but they fell short. Look at this Arizona roster. Keyshawn Johnson, transfer. Caleb Love. Transfer. Pella Lawson, long time ago, Utah transfer. Umar Ballo, transfer. Bradley, transfer from Alabama. That's the program in Alabama right now. They have experience. They have firepower. They pass the ball to each other. The question is, for me, in this game, loss at USC, right? Loss at Stanford, you know, and a loss at Oregon State. That's the team that you hope doesn't show up mm -hmm. in this game. In the second half of Dayton, wow, it got a little hairy. Clemson is going to be there for the fight. They're battle-tested, playing in the ACC. This is going to be a really good game. Arizona is going to have to fight, claw, and scratch to be able to get to an uh, opportunity for Kayla Love to face North Carolina again. All right. So you going Arizona? I'm going Zona. All right. Isaac, who you got? Two pivot points for me. One, transition defense. Clemson's transition defense has been phenomenal all year long. I think Arizona's at its best in transition. I love when Jaden Bradley's able to get out in fast break and just he gets downhill and gets pressure on the rim in transition. He gives you no time to wait. And if Arizona is able to get out and get 15 to 17 to 20, double digit, whatever, those points in transition, that's where I think that they can have some separation here. The other thing is cross-matching in the front court because Kesha Johnson, I think, is really just a Swiss Army knife for them defensively. What have we seen all year is with teams going after Umar Balo and trying to have big men that can shoot it from three. P.J. Hall is a really good three-point shooter from downtown. 
I think Kishad Johnson needs to get matched up on P.J. Hall, which allows Umar Balo to go up against Ian Shecklin in the front court. If that cross match works and Arizona is able to keep that throughout the entire possession, I think you're able to limit some of the ways that Clemson can get to its five out stuff that they do offensively. So those are the two big, big, biggest pivot points for me. I'm going to go with the deeper team that has the deeper backcourt. Give me Arizona. All right, I got two points of my own. The first one, if P.J. Hall gets into foul trouble, this game is over quick. Uh, he cannot. He's he struggled with foul trouble this year, and when you really break down Clemson's results, if P.J. Hall is not on the floor, they are a vastly different team. He needs to be able to give them a long, productive night for them to call this a game. Chris, you talked about how this is a Arizona team that has had some very surprising bad losses along the way. What's, what's somewhat surprising about that, because it's 100% valid, is when you deep dig into their metrics, this is now a top five team in the country in Ken Palm. This is one of two teams in the country left in the Sweet 16 who finish in both the top 10 in offense and in defense. They've got five different players who score in double figures. So you've got all these metrics that should, should suggest there wouldn't be this type of variance. So it's interesting. If you take away those three bad games, you look at a team that is suddenly one of the very best in college basketball. So to your point, as long as that that version of Arizona doesn't show up, I think this ends up being a fairly big win, especially if they can go at P.J. Hall and get him in foul trouble. But you never know why that team has shown up a few different times this season. As long as it doesn't, I think Arizona wins this one uh, pretty easily. 